Hey there, today I'm going to talk to you about how to turn over a bed in a high rotation market garden. There are a lot of ways to take a bed and turn it over and plant new stuff in it. Now in this style of bio-intensive market gardening, uh, and especially in the climate here, we're in central North Carolina, I can use, depending on the crop, I could use one bed four or five times, or maybe even six times in a season, depending on what I'm growing. Uh, six might be pushing it, but four or five for sure, depending on the crop. Um, some other crops, uh, I might get two rotations, like tomatoes or cucumbers, um, but a lot of greens and stuff like that, we can get a lot of turns. So I wanna show you how I do this today. Um, one thing is I don't use a tiller, um, and I've talked about that a little bit before. Uh, so I'm gonna go through and show you exactly what I do. Uh, there are lots and lots of ways to do this. Um, people are using all different tools and techniques and styles and inputs and things like that. And I also want to talk about amendments and uh, just talk and show you the general process. First thing I like to do is to remove the previous crop. Uh, we have a bed of lettuce here. And you can see there's still a good amount of lettuce here. You could definitely eat this. Um, it's just not prime quality. You've already gotten a, a cut or two off of it. And some of it was starting to bolt, which I already pulled out. Um, so we just want to get this out and use it for something else. I also have a couple other beds of lettuce that are ready to go So I don't really need this lettuce now. You could definitely eat this um, You can feed it to your chickens if you have chickens or other animals I do give some of the crop residue to chickens for sure uh, The thing about the birds we have they're hybrid laying birds And so if I give them too many greens and too much stuff to eat It kind of throws off their diet balance and they start laying a little bit less the production dips a little bit um, Not a ton, but just a little bit and when I'm trying to get as much production out of them as possible um, I really, uh, you know, pay attention to that. Uh, so the rest of this will just get composted and uh, all these nutrients and um, biomass will stay on the property. All right, so um, some people just cut them at the base. I like to yank them out. Um, I like to try to disturb the soil as little as possible. And so what I do with lettuce is I just hold the ground and then pull up the lettuce and try to keep as much of the soil intact as possible. Um, you can see here that there's some wood chips in, in, on the ground. Hopefully you can see that. And if you watch my wood chips video, um, this is definitely one of the negatives about wood chips. They do wind up in the bed. Now, th this lettuce has been in the ground for several months, so some of, this, some of these wood chips definitely worked its way in over time. Uh, but it's pretty easy. I mean, I can just push them off or rake them out. It's really not a big deal at this point. They're not like pushed into the ground. I also want to point out something. You notice I just pulled these up, and I haven't cultivated in here. And, I don't know, a really long time. If not, I don't know if I ever did cultivate in the bed, maybe right after I transplanted. Um, but you can see there's very little weed pressure. And uh, I'm gonna do another video about weeds because a lot of people have questions about that. But you know, the fact that we're growing these things so close together and we're not tilling and all the other kind of stuff, it, it really keeps the weeds down. So I'm just gonna keep working these guys out and then I'll show you what I do after that. Got all the lettuce pulled out <clears throat> and uh, it's looking good. This bed, uh, these, this lettuce has been in the ground for a long time. It was planted I think mid-February, so, um, you know, planting it Saturday in the spring or even, you know, before spring, actually. Um, it's a slow grower. So it's been there for a long time, and because we're moving all the beds around and stuff, it's kind of um, not perfect, but when we put the string lines on, we'll, we'll get it back in shape. Next step is we're going to use the flame weeder. Let's talk about the flame weeder. Um, this is one of the steps in my bed flipping process that I find is absolutely crucial. Now, I would love a fancy flame weeder. Um, they, they make them that go over. There's a couple companies that make them. They're about 30 inches wide and they go over the whole bed in one pass. Um, I would love one of those, but it's not in the budget right now. Um, so I'm just using one of these guys. This is like a, a little flamethrower. And they're pretty cheap. You can get them in a lot of places. And then just this is just a standard propane tank you'd have for your barbecue grill or whatever. Um, I have a couple of tanks and I just keep at least one full. Um, and so what you do is you just run over the bed with this and uh, it'll kill any small weeds, anything that's just germinated, um, thread stage weeds, stuff like that. I find this really helpful uh, in combination with not tilling. This pretty much gives me a stale seed bed going, going forward, which is crucial to keeping the weeds down. A couple things to keep in mind when you're doing this is be really careful. This is a flamethrower, so you gotta make sure that you're not hurting yourself um, or catching things on fire. Um, you have to be really careful, especially if your beds are pretty close together. I have 14 inch uh, walkways here, is you're not to uh, torching the beds on either side. Um, and the other thing is if you have any leaves or anything that have fallen on your bed, like if it's in the fall or you just there's a lot of leaves around, uh, make sure you pull them out before you start running those over with the flame uh, flame weeder because they'll just they'll just ignite. Um, so yeah, and the other thing is um, I think a lot of people have the tendency to uh, really burn the crap out of the ground, and the the flame you only have to hit the weed for a second, and uh, it won't die like right in front of you, but it'll die like within a couple hours. So 
you know, save the propane. Um, and because we're just doing a light um, torching of the ground, it really doesn't affect the biology and everything that's going on there. So I just find this to be a, an awesome uh, way to start with a stale seedbed. Um, you know, most of us burn propane for lots of things. Like we have some propane that we use for our, our home and uh, or a barbecue grill. So I don't find this to be too bad in, in an environmental sense. And really, I don't use that much gas. So um, it, it's just a great, great method. So uh, I really, really do like this. I'm just gonna show you a few seconds worth here. Um, it is really loud, so it's, uh, you know, it's hard. It's, I'm not gonna be able to talk over it, but yeah. That's about it. And uh, the other thing is you can, you can hit up your walkways too if there's any weeds in there. Um, I also found this tool to be really helpful for lots of other things around, around the home. Like we have a, a patio that's made out of pavers and we get like little bits of grass that's growing up between them. I just hit it with this. Uh, my mother-in-law has got a really hard packed gravel driveway and there's lots of grass and weeds coming up through there. And I just, within minutes, just go over the whole driveway and take care of that. So, you know, I'd rather do that than to, you know, use Roundup or spray, spray chemicals on there. That's not really my style. You've heard me talk about string lines before. Uh, I do like to use them on occasion, especially when beds are just kind of not in the right place or I'm building new beds. Um, as I just mentioned, this bed's been in here, uh, planted since about February. And since then I've moved things around a little bit. So things have shifted. Um, as I sort of set up the new layout. So this bed's a little bit, um, not exactly where it is. Um, you can see there's a, quite a bit of space over here that, um, you know, is compacted, but it is soil. So uh, the next step after this is we're gonna broad fork. All right, this is a broad fork. I've talked about this in other videos, but another crucial part of the process here. Um, not my favorite broad fork. Um, I did buy this before last season and I have heavy clay underneath the compost. So it's, the tines are all bent and out of whack, but I'm just using it for now until I can swing a nicer one um, and so what we're going to do here is just going to broad fork uh, down the, the down the bed once i do this every time i turn the beds uh, maybe next year or the year after i won't have to do it as often as the soil gets better but it doesn't take that long and, I, and the benefits are huge uh, it just aerates the soil without inverting it really preserves microbiology um, there's a lot of people that use these in the market garden world but i found it to be crucial and uh, just really beneficial overall in getting my soil better and uh, you know, some people talk about this still being tilling. I mean, it really doesn't cause any extra compaction. I'm not really hurting worms and bugs and stuff like that in the soil. So I don't know, there's, there's no official definition of no-till yet. So, you know, this is part of my system and it's pretty crucial. So just get it in. Sometimes you gotta rock it back and forth a little bit and then pull it back. You don't wanna like pull it back all the way to the ground uh, cause I'll show you, but if you do this, you're kind of like really screwing up the ground. So that's not really what you wanna do. You just kind of want to break the surface. That's about it. And then you just pull it out at an angle, pull it back a little bit, push it straight down. Sometimes you got to wiggle back and forth to get it. But you can see, you can work pretty quickly. Um, the other nice thing is uh, it's good exercise, right? We all got to do more exercise. first few times that you broad fork might take a little bit longer as it's harder to work the soil but after you've done a few times man it takes a few minutes so next thing amendments so let's talk amendments people use all sorts of different things to amend their soil uh, in between bed flips and also at the end of the season um, last year I was using a lot of dried uh, organic composted chicken manure um, I decided to not use that this year uh, the compost that I've been getting is unbelievable, um, and this isn't true for everybody, so context is crucial here. It depends on what you can get your hands on, what you can afford, what's accessible, that sort of thing. Um, for me, I can get really great compost, and there is some manure in the compost, so I've decided to not do that. So right now, what I'm adding on bed flips is some compost and some alfalfa meal. And one of the things on this YouTube channel I want to talk about is not just how to do things, but you know, this is a small business and I want to talk about costs. I want to be real about this stuff. So um, let's, let's go through that. And I made a little, uh, a little sheet here um, for, with some calculations. So on bed flips, I'm putting two wheelbarrows per 50 foot bed. So it's a 30 inch wide by 50 foot bed. So two wheelbarrows. Now this wheelbarrow holds six uh, cubic feet. And so that turns out to be 
a little bit less than half a yard, but I calculated out. Now I'm paying uh, for compost, I'm paying $28.50 a yard and that's delivered, um, which is a little bit pricey, but it's, it's great compost, so it's totally worth it. So that turns out to be $12.67 uh, per bed. And then the alfalfa meal is supposed to be applied at a rate of two and a half pounds per 100 square feet. These beds are 125 square feet, so that's a little over three pounds. And I'm paying $25.95 for a 50 pound bag. But anyways, this works out to $1.62 in alfalfa meal um, uh, per bed flip. So altogether, I'm in this for $14.29 per bed flip. Now that's pretty cheap as far as I'm concerned. Uh, lettuce, for example, on average, I'm getting about $10 a pound. And so on a 50 foot bed, I'm getting about 50 pounds. So that's about $500 worth of lettuce. Um, so for a $14 input in, in fertility, I'm okay with that. Now, you don't have to add compost every time you flip a bed. Um, for me, I actually kind of like it. Um, it is like, it kind of spreads out the work a little bit. Um, I, as I've talked about before, my clay soil, I'm just kind of building on top of that. Um, so I'm not like tilling it in and, and trying to incorporate it. In, and so I'm just using this basically as my soil. And over time it will incorporate and make everything better. Also, I find that um, when you pull crops out, you're always pulling out a little bit of soil. And so it's nice to replenish it a little bit. Also, I found that if your ground's a little bit wet, like it's been raining um, and you need to get in there and work the bed, uh, just adding a little bit of compost on top can really uh, make it a little bit more workable. So that's also a really nice thing. So um, compost and then alfalfa meal, which is just a grind up, ground up alfalfa. That's pretty much it. And uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these gets on the bed and we'll go from there. So that two wheelbarrow per bed thing is, is all contextual for, for me. Um, it could be more or less for you. Um, the other thing is if I'm doing crops are in the ground a little bit longer, maybe like tomatoes or cucumbers or peppers or eggplants, stuff like that, I might add three or four wheelbarrows uh, just because I'm not gonna get in there as often. So I just want more stuff in the ground for them. I got those two wheelbarrows spaced out pretty well. After you do it a few times, you'll sort of learn how big the piles are. So just go down the line and dump it. Um, and then the next thing is I'm just gonna spread it out with, uh, with this hard rake. Uh, I have a couple of different rakes, as you might have seen. Um, I had a big landscape rake for finishing the bed, um, but I like this one just for, um, for smoothing it out. Now, the other thing about adding compost, which is great, is, uh, of course, I'm trying to build organic matter, increase fertility, but it's also kind of like a mulch layer, too, and if you could put even more on there, it's almost like you're using the compost as a mulch, so it kind of works really well, and if some of you guys are familiar with stuff like back to Eden Garden where there's heavily uh, mulched with wood chips. I mean, it's kind of like that. I mean, we're just mulching with compost and then we're planting to that. So it really does keep the weeds down, which is, uh, which is a huge benefit. Uh, so I just take the rake and just smooth it out a little bit, try to get it towards the edges of the bed. Doesn't have to be super precise here. But that's the next step here. You can add the alfalfa meal or any other amendment, uh, you know, powdery amendments or whatever. You just walk down and spread it out. If you do it in that sort of zigzag pattern, when you go through with the tilter, it really gets it to incorporate really nicely. Time to use a tilter. I talked about this in how to prepare new beds video, um, so I'm not going to go into detail. But the one thing I want to mention is I do use a 20 volt uh, DeWalt drill, and um, I do use it on the first speed, is what I like. I've, I've seen that this tool is pretty easy to get started with. It's pretty self-explanatory and really not hard to master. But I feel like there's a little bit of nuance to it: how fast you walk, depending on the consistency of the ground. Also, if you want to throw the soil one way or the other to try to level it out or get it closer to the edge, you got to feel for it for a while. You can also lean the handles down a little bit more to put a little bit more pressure with the uh, the back part here. Just try to level out a little bit more. So I've noticed that after using it for a year, you sort of get a little bit more of an advanced feel to it. But at first it's, uh, you know, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna run up and down the beds here just to sort of level things out and incorporate the alfalfa meal. just come back in the other direction on the other side but because of the irrigation here I just come back and do it from this side so I'm not walking into the uh, 
the irrigation risers. landscape rake and just do a, a quick, a quick uh, finishing just to really get it nice and uh, even. Now is the tilter necessary? No, you could just do it with a rake. I do really like it though. It does make things really nice. Let's go through and you know this rake's a little bit wider so I hold it at an angle and sort of drag it across. You can see how nice this comes out. Last thing I do is put down wood chips in the walkways. If you've watched my wood chips and walkways video, I'll put a link to it right here. You'll see why I love doing this. But this is just part of my bed prep and uh, this is the last step before I can seed or transplant. One thing I want to point out is about rotation. And I don't have an official rotation plan like a lot of uh, larger farms do, but you know, one thing I do try to do is mix up the crop. So I just pulled out lettuce, now I'm going to put in kale. So I just try not to put the same crop in the same bed two times in a row. All right, there you go. Looks awesome. I'm pretty pumped. This is pretty much how I flip most of my beds. Um, and now I'm going to seed this with baby kale. If you haven't seen my video about seeding, uh, please check that out. And remember that all this is contextual. It's based on your context and what worked for you, what you have available. This isn't the way to flip beds. This is a way to flip beds. This is what's been working for me right now. Uh, but I've been pretty happy with it. And uh, Things have been turning out really well. And uh, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to the channel, it'll be greatly appreciated. And also if you share it with your friends, just trying to spread the word and get as much information out to growers as possible so we can all grow better food. And so let me get to seeding.